As a practicing urologist for the last couple of decades, one of the common scenarios I see and one of the common questions I'm often faced with is, does having an enlarged prostate mean I have prostate cancer or does it increase my risk of having prostate cancer in the future? Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Schubert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located on the Gold Coast in Australia. In the following video, I wanted to highlight for you a really common experience that I see in my clinical experience where men come for a prostate assessment. They don't really understand the difference between an enlarged prostate and prostate cancer and if the two are interconnected. Please, as always, if you get benefit from the video, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment and give a thumbs up to the video. Okay, let's get into it. Before we discuss the difference between an enlarged prostate and prostate cancer, I wanted to highlight for you really what and where the prostate is. Many men have got no idea for obvious reasons what the prostate is or what its role physiologically under normal circumstances is. So to dial into that, it is part of the male reproductive system. It's a small gland. It's traditionally described as the size of a walnut. And its role, in essence, is to produce fluid that is found in a man's ejaculate fluid. And its role, therefore, is to provide nutritional support for sperm. The prostate is located deep within the pelvis. It's sandwiched between the pelvic floor and the base of the bladder. There are three conditions that affect the prostate as a man, pro man progresses through life. One is enlargement, the other one is prostatitis or inflammation, and the third one is the development of an abnormal growth or prostate cancer. Now, if we look at an enlarged prostate, the technical term for that is benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH. It's commonly referred to as benign prostatic enlargement. In essence, the central part of the prostate, which surrounds the outlet pipe of the bladder, that's called the urethra, that central part of the prostate grows as a man progresses through life. I often describe it to my patients that the prostate in essence is shaped like a donut with a tube through the middle. As you get older, the donut gets bigger, there's compression on the tube, and men begin to develop urinary symptoms. Initially, those symptoms can be obstructive in nature, i.e. a slower flow, more hesitancy, it can take them longer to pee. With time, they can develop bladder changes. And in essence, the bladder is a big muscular bag, the wall is made of muscle, and the more pressure that is required for the bladder to, to basically to squeeze and force urine through the prostate, the muscle in the bladder wall gets thicker, the bladder gets stiffer, and men develop symptoms such as getting up more frequently at night to pee. Sometimes they rush to the toilet in the day and it, in its severe form, they may rush and get caught short and not make it to the toilet in time. All of these are symptoms of BPH. Now, one of the challenges that we face is that prostate cancer can also cause similar symptoms, similar features to an enlarged prostate. However, prostate cancer, when it does occur, tends to occur in the outer part of the prostate. So it tends to occur near the shell, away from the pipe. So the majority of people who do have prostate cancer, most of them are relatively asymptomatic. And the majority of men we discover have prostate cancer from a blood test or an examination that leads to an MRI scan rather than through the development of urinary symptoms. Obviously, if a particular abnormal growth or a particular prostate cancer is quite large, then without doubt that cancer can cause some compressive effects onto the urethra and men can present with urinary symptoms. So they can present with a slower flow or more frequency. More rarely, we can also see that men can present with blood in their urine or sometimes blood in their ejaculate fluid. So these are two signs to be cognizant of. In my experience, 
from talking with thousands of men over the last couple of decades, men are worried that they may have prostate cancer when they notice a change in the way that they pee. Those men actually tend to have the benign enlargement rather than cancer. And the men that can have prostate cancer are those men who have a disproportionately high PSA, but report very few urinary symptoms. Now, the next question is, can you have both a benign enlarged prostate and prostate cancer at the same time? And the answer to that question is yes, absolutely you, you can. And that is one of the challenges that we as healthcare providers face when we're trying to work out the situation that a particular man has. Both prostate cancer and BPH are more common as men progress through life. And so the most common age that I diagnose men with a prostate cancer is around 65. You may have seen from a previous video that the benign enlargement increases as we progress through life with around 40 to 50% of men in their 50s and 60s having symptoms related to enlargement in their prostate and approximately 80% of men in their 80s will have urinary symptoms related to an enlarged prostate. So the question then is how do we differentiate between BPH and also prostate cancer? And to dial into that, the key metrics that we use are number one, what's the PSA and does the, coral, and does the PSA correlate with the crude size of the prostate? What I mean by that is the bigger the prostate, the higher we expect the PSA to be. Although we use the PSA to screen for cancer, it can go up if your prostate's big, inflamed, or if someone does actually have prostate cancer. So we use features to recap again the PSA and prostate size, which we get crudely from either the prostate examination or an ultrasound. Now, if we are suspicious about the presence of prostate cancer from either an examination or a PSA and certain, uh, certain thresholds are met, the next step in that process is for a man to have an MRI scan of his prostate. The MRI is far more specific, it's far more accurate than either the blood test or the examination. And the aim of the MRI scan is to highlight for us the size, the shape of the prostate, and more specifically, is there a concerning lesion within the prostate that we think could carry a risk of being prostate cancer. Now, beyond an MRI scan, the next step is for a man to have a biopsy and if you are in the process of exploring an abnormal MRI or your urologist has recommended to you that you need a biopsy, please have a look at our, bi our biopsy video that goes in some detail about what you can expect through this process. From a BPH point of view, the way that we manage BPH depends very much on the severity of symptoms that a man has and the degree of bother that he experiences. And it's the combination and interplay of those two characteristics that guides us as to whether or not that man requires further investigation and which treatment, in essence, he may require. Again, if you found this video helpful, if you have questions, uh, if you have a story that you would like to share for others so that we may all learn through this journey, please leave it in the comments section down below. Until the next time, please take care of your prostate.